Hare Krishna! My name is Giridhar Das and welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing the third part of our little Gita 101 series. The third and last part. In the first part we discussed verse 212 of Bhagavad Gita where we understand and learn that we don't have a soul but we are an eternal soul. In class 2 we discussed the um, everlasting question people have in the, in the theistic religious world, what does God want from me? And we saw the Bhagavad Gita's beautiful description of that, Krishna's beautiful description of that from verse 55 of chapter 11. But today we're talking about another very important concept of the Bhagavad Gita, and which is why I'm dedicating this last class to it, which is the concept of the gunas. And what that means is it's translated as modes of material nature. But what that concept means is the concept that I want to make clear here. The concept means that our life choices, our day-to-day -day habits, the choices we make, the way we live, what we eat, how we maintain ourselves in our house, who we hang out with, those little decisions have a direct impact on our spiritual lives, on our consciousness, and on our state of being as a whole. It's a very important point of the yoga philosophy in general, but especially, you know, it's certainly greatly emphasized in the Bhagavad Gita. To give you an idea, there's 18 chapters in the Bhagavad Gita. Two and a half chapters are about the gunas. So it's a very important point. So for that, I want to read to you verse 5 of chapter 14. Chapter 14 is entirely dedicated to the gunas. And verse 5, Krishna gives the first presentation of the topic. So let's read the Sanskrit shloka just to get the feel for the original sound of the Sanskrit and then we'll read the translation. So here we go. Satvam rajas tamaiti guna prakriti sambhava nibadnanti mahabaho dehi dehi namavyayam Translation. Material nature consists of three modes, three gunas. Sattva, translated as goodness, rajas, translated as passion, and tamas, translated here as ignorance. When the eternal living entity comes in contact with nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, he or she becomes conditioned by these modes. So the point here is, Krishna is saying, look, when you the fact that you as an eternal soul, we will establish that right in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, you're an eternal transcendental soul, you've got nothing to do with matter. But as soon as you've come here, you've incarnated, you've come down to the material world, you find yourself trapped in the material body. As soon as you are here, like you and I are, then know that you will be conditioned, affected by this material energy. And then, of course, you know, the whole purpose of the other two and a half chapters talking about the gunas is to learn how these things will affect you. But basically, I'll give you the basic idea here. So first, you have the three modes and sattva, rajas, and tamas, translated as goodness, passion, and ignorance. So sattva, this mode of goodness is the one we want to cultivate in life. So what does that mean? Sattva is the purest mode. It's where material energy will give you the least amount of trouble, where your mind will be the clearest. Well, you can have the chance of having the least amount of material conditioning to your eternal transcendental self. That's the idea of cultivating sattva. So how do we cultivate sattva? A few key points. First, food. As you've seen, yogis tend to be vegetarian, vegan these days, and the reason for that vegan vegetarian diet is that it's a sattvic diet. Not only vegan vegetarian, but it should be healthy as well. So a, a healthy, balanced diet that doesn't have death and violence in it. it doesn't have you know has the least amount of death i should say because of course you do kill lettuces and carrots when you eat them but the least amount of suffering involved 
and the cleanness because you know blood is gross right i mean everybody knows it's gross you walk into a you know butcher shop it's disgusting right it smells bad dead fish are gross they smell bad i mean you can see it's clear that it's disgusting you know it's obvious i mean i was a meat eater before but you know and i that's just fa it's obvious that it's 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 dirtier it's it's more dangerous you know we know we, you get more much greater chance of getting diseases and problems and infections with with meat products of course all this pandemics we're suffering are because of meat markets you know because of this contact of dead animals with humans it's it's not a good combination so anyway so one clear thing is diet and that's why the yogic path kind of you know requests uh, it's kind of like a first step towards taking seriously your yoga path is to take on a sattvic diet which means a vegetarian you know v these days vegan but and you know the old days lacto vegetarian diet so that's one thing not consuming drugs or alcohol cigarettes etc why because those things are tamas right they kill you they make you crazy they lower your frequency so in the in the yogic path it's a path of no drugs so that's another example the important example is cleanliness it's always like it's a it's a big topic that's you know top of the list in the yoga sutras top of the list cleanliness socham cleanliness is sattvic so maintaining your house clean your body clean you know having regular baths and showers your clothes clean and organized you know you can take a step for not just clean but organized these things uplift your mind clear your mind any idea today there, there are people doing whole books on the topic about how if you organize your office you're going to be more productive and you're going to think more clearly there are whole books now about being um, organized in your digital world so like you know like when you log on to your computer it's not a whole your 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 desktop on the computer isn't a mess of files it's just all organized and maybe you just have like one that's that's my my desktop is like that it's just like the one thing just the trash thing is there nothing else you know to keep it really organized you know so it keeps your mind clear so those are examples of sattvic behavior and of course that's going to include associating being friends with people who are sattvic as well and consuming sattvic culture so those things like when you see a channel like this one you know, it's sattvic transcendental when you hear mantras when you hear let's say classical music you know these things are sattvic they elevate your consciousness now the second thing is rajas so the second translate here is passion and the big quality of rajas is that you want more you're hankering you're like intensely desiring things it's the whole shopping mall culture like you want to buy things you want to own you want to show off you want to you know look good to your friends and you know and show you know just it's that consume it's just consuming and appearing in pride and, and being more and that kind of culture is rajas so that's a rajasic thing which is going to agitate the mind makes you get confused as you've probably experienced i mean i certainly have in my life i'm sure you've experienced that when you're in this kind of greedy lusty mood you you tend not to make the best decisions of your life and then last tamas and Thomas Krishna says it's when you act in foolishness you just crazy it's laziness it's it's just you know it's just your mind is really covered that's that's where drugs come in and meat and that kind of violent behavior all those things are very tamasic so dirt um, you know rotten food just bad stuff just stuff that really lowers your vibes lowers your covers your consciousness so that's Thomas so the idea here what I just want to again the point here isn't to go through the whole like modes carefully but just to emphasize this point that the spiritual yoga path does not um, forget about your day-to-day -day life one of the things I really like about Bhagavad Gita the yoga path is that it's it integrates like your day-to-day -day life is integrated with your spiritual life it's not like oh it's something else i've got a spiritual life and i go to the temple sometimes and the rest of my life is like whatever no my every decision the way i live where i live how i live all these things are affecting my mind and my mind is the instrument i'm going to use 
to become enlightened. It's going to be through my mind. A mind is the mirror with which the soul can then see the world and see itself. And if the mind is then polluted, conditioned by the lower modes, agitated by rajas, covered by tamas, then my chances of self-realization, my chances of having a clear mind are, you know, impaired or destroyed entirely. So it's a very important verse, very important concept of the Bhagavad Gita. So that's it. That's it for our Bhagavad Gita 101 series. I hope you liked it. Let me know if you liked it. And if you haven't seen the other ones, there's a link at the end of this video here for the rest of the series, a little playlist I created here so you can see um, classes one and two as well. And if you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends who are interested in Bhagavad Gita as well, because I need all your help to get this channel off the ground. So thank you very much for your time, for your patience. Hare Krishna.